Welcome back to another episode. Today, well, I bought another project. It's a 50 year old. This is my Clark TW20 forklift. Uh, it's probably 50 years old or so. Um, never mind the mess that you don't see here. Just imagine it's a green screen. I mean, it's all good. Uh, if it was a green screen, though, the forklift would actually disappear, too. For the past 12 years or so um, with my solar company, I have been doing things the hard way. And that is getting a delivery, unloading it. You know, they, they bring it off the truck, drop it in the driveway, and then I have to manually move it wherever it is that it's going. And then I have to manually move everything again to get it into a truck or trailer or whatever to get it where it needs to be. So with uh, some problems that we had at a recent uh, installation, uh, decided it was time to get a forklift. And overall, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, it's a 24 volt system that's in this one. And just like most battery powered uh, forklifts, the batteries are very weak. Um, I don't know how long they'll actually last yet uh, for running around, but if I can get 10 minutes of time out of them, that's plenty. Uh, and if not, we can always build a, uh, um, you know, a, a battery pack for it or something. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it moves, it goes forwards and backwards. The lift goes up and down. Um, when the, when the forks are up here, uh, it does kind of slowly drift down. Um, but when they're low, they're firm. So, uh, you know, probably a seal here in the mast needs to be redone, but I don't know if I'm going to bother with that. We'll see. Um, the guy told me it didn't have any brakes. This front panel was being held on by the bungee cord. Um, so I just went and picked up some nuts and bolts to be able to attach it properly. Uh, but the uh, master cylinder was completely dry. Uh, I actually pulled off the reservoir and look, look inside that. That is pretty gross. So uh, um, I've gone ahead and I've ordered another master cylinder for it, and that'll be in in a few days. And, uh, you know, that's, yeah, because right now it has no brakes, like no, no brakes whatsoever. Um, so I can't take it down to my shop because the shop is downhill. And this thing will just keep on going and make an exit through the back of the garage. In general, I think I made a good buy on it because it is it cleaned up really nicely. It was filthy when I got it. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, I, I probably could turn it around and sell it right now for more than what I bought it for. Um, but that's not the point of this point video. The point of this video is incorporating some 3D printing into a fix that needs to be done on this forklift. Uh, the forklift's going to live basically inside. So, I'm going to use PLA uh, on my fix, and it'll be fine. Uh, as you can see, we're focused on the seat. Now, I just went to, to um, Tractor Supply because I was just going to pick up a new seat because this one's crap. And uh, they're like $150 for the cheapest one there. So uh, that's not going to happen at the moment. Uh, I may look at uh, Amazon and see if I can pick up something garbage from there and uh, just to throw it on here and, and have something. Uh, but if we tip the seat up here, we can see what we're going to be working on. Uh, if you see here, we have what looks like one of the original um, spacers for the seat mount there. And that's the only one that is looking original. As you can see here, we have a castle nut and some other nuts. Uh, I think that's a uh, socket from some, some size socket. And the one that's down there is also socket E looking. Uh, it doesn't look like it's a regular, you know, space or anything. So, uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually, we're going to start with that and get those, uh, I have on. for a few moments. I was actually thinking about putting one of these 914 Porsche seats on the, the, uh, forklift. I thought that'd be pretty funny, but I don't want to split up the pair. So, um, yeah, that's not the forklift itself is pretty cool though. Before I go inside and start uh, 3D printing stuff, um, the uh, it's a three wheeled one as you can see, and the steering is all done by cable. It's, it's pretty cool. Like they they run, you can kind of see it here. 
on the back. Uh, and then it, it goes up um, and winds its way up to the, uh, to the front. It's pretty interesting how that's all set up. Um, but uh, yeah, this situation caused another situation that I'll show you real quick. This is my father-in-law's uh, trailer that I borrowed to uh, go pick up the forklift. And eh, you probably can notice now what the issue is. Um, so I pointed out that the forklift is a three-wheeler. So it had a lot of weight right in the center here uh and as you can see it kind of tacoed the uh the back this back rail of the trailer so that's another thing i gotta fix fun times but uh yeah it's really not that bad it looks worse than what it is i mean it's like two inches out there and, and then touching at the top but uh i mean really that's it, it's not that much of a of a bend that's in this it's just in this rear cross member it's not like the real you know trailer part but yeah go figure i talked right. about it well it's time to go model this little simple part up and print a bunch of them out all right so now we're in bamboo studio and we're going to use bamboo studio for the entire thing we're not going to have to get into fusion 360 or anything so uh here's how we're going to do this uh, this is a pretty cool little part of uh, what they're doing with some of the slicers these days. Um, so we're going to right click on the uh, build plate and right here you're going to have add primitive and we're going to go to cylinder. We're going to add that and it's going to drop it right into the center of the build plate. Dog's moving. Dog's not moving anymore. All right and now we're going to go to scale. Um, we're going to add the 25 you know, it's like an inch by inch, uh, and this one we're going to change to 35 because that matches the height of the original one. Um, and then we can click off of that. All right, now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually, if you go over here uh, to your settings where it says global, uh, you're actually going to change that to objects. If you don't change it to objects, it's okay. Uh, it'll change it by itself. Uh, here in a second and it's going to give you a warning about hey we're changing to the object uh, modifier stuff instead so go back to your your uh, cylinder we're going to right click on it again and now you got a, a add negative part so we're going to add a negative part of a cylinder there it goes it, it, it brought up the modifier and see here it was had a little uh, arrow showing that it was switching over to the object view um, that's okay and now we're going to go and change the scale of this one so we're going to actually change this to nine millimeters uh nine millimeters and this one we're going to just make it you know 50. there we go doesn't really matter too much on that so click off of that so that's done we're going to click on the negative part right click again hit center and then it should drop it right there into the center of the original um, cylinder. And now we just gotta slice it. So this is a real simple way to make a simple part that you need without having to go into Fusion 360 or anything. And as you can see, it did, oh, come on, focus. There you go. Um, it did put that hole right in through the middle there and you can see that. Now I'm going to go ahead and redo this, um, add some walls, add a little more infill since it's a seat part, um, just to make it stronger, but we'll get it printed out, four of them actually. And now that uh, I changed the walls and infill stuff, all that good crap, um, we're just going to select it, right click it, and we're going to go to clone, and it's going to think about it for a half a second, we're going to make three copies. There we go. And then we can uh, also auto orient them. There we go. Slice it. And it's time to print. Let's go. All right. And with that, let's swap them out. All right. Well, we've had a little change as usual things don't go according to plan so these guys are out and these guys are in 
So the, uh, the difference here is that these are 35 millimeters tall and uh, these are 25 millimeters tall. I bought an, I bought a seat. And of course it doesn't just attach it. You have to cut the seat apart, take the frame off and drill new holes everywhere. Uh, I only broke one drill bit, only one. So that's good. But uh, time to get it together. I'll show you here in a second. <laughs> new seat, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, so it's hot. Fat guy is sweating. Let me show you what I did. Oh, look at it. It looks so much better than the old chair. Here's, here's what the old one there looks like. I actually had to cut it off, cut the frame of it off. Um, you can see there on the top piece. And I used that to mount the new frame to the uh, sliders and all that good stuff. So there's our black pieces that were originally going to be green. So the green ones, we're going to go into these holes here uh, if uh, it was the same size, but uh, it didn't. So this is the frame that I cut off of the uh, uh, other seat. You can see I sliced it there. You know, not worried about painting it or anything. You know, it's a 60-year-old forklift. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, you know, printed those new ones out, put them in there. Everything works great. The seat does now have a forward and backwards capability, so I'm not just stuck in one spot. Um, the uh, biggest downfall to the whole thing now is that it does sit me a little bit taller than what it was before, and I'm a tall guy, so I kind of hit that. So I may go back in here and flip this uh, seat bracket around, uh, flip it over so that this part is on underneath, um, which will lower the seat overall by about another half an inch or so, a quarter to a half an inch. I don't know if it's worth it. You know, I just watch my head. <laughs> no big deal. It's really nice that you can go into like Bamboo Studio and work a slicer and stuff like that now. And you don't necessarily have to break out the whole Fusion 360 and all that stuff to make a simple part just a, a basic functional part works great. I'm sure there's people out there that can make some crazy stuff using just a slicer, but that's a practical reason for me to use it. So until next time, if you enjoyed this stuff, please give us a like. Uh, oh, in the comments, Clark, as we are driving the Clark forklift. So uh, um, have a good one. Peace out, sauerkraut. Thanks for watching. So now the next thing to do this thing is to, uh, my master cylinder has come in, so I need to replace that, but nobody cares about that. Um, but, uh, man, having a forklift is pretty cool. I dig it. Hopefully it works <laughs> right once I get the, uh, master cylinder switched out.